Welcome to USMLEFastTrack.com. The section we're going to talk about today is from First Aid for the USMLE Step 1, 2013 edition. Page 549. Pulmonary Hypertension. What is the normal pulmonary artery pressure? The normal pulmonary artery pressure is between 10 and 14 millimeters of mercury. What would the pulmonary artery pressure be in pulmonary hypertension? In pulmonary hypertension, the pulmonary artery pressure can become greater than 25 millimeters of mercury or greater than 35 millimeters of mercury during exercise. What can be the consequence of pulmonary hypertension? Pulmonary hypertension will result in atherosclerosis, medial hypertrophy, and intimal fibrosis of the pulmonary artery. We already mentioned earlier in the chapter that long-standing pulmonary hypertension can lead to right-sided heart failure. What problem can lead to primary pulmonary hypertension? Primary pulmonary hypertension can result due to inactivating mutation in the BMPR2 gene. And the function of this gene normally is to inhibit vascular smooth muscle proliferation. And so when that gene is mutated, it leads to proliferation of the vascular smooth muscles, leading to primary pulmonary hypertension. One thing to also note about primary pulmonary hypertension is that there is good prognosis for this. Name all the conditions that can lead to secondary pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary hypertension can occur due to some underlying conditions such as COPD, in which there would be destruction of the lung parenchyma, leading to an increased pressure in the pulmonary arteries and therefore leading to pulmonary hypertension. Also, mitral stenosis would increase the resistance and therefore increasing the pressure in the pulmonary arteries, leading to pulmonary hypertension. Also, recurrent thromboemboli, which would decrease the cross-sectional area of the pulmonary vascular bed, also leading to that increased pressure in the pulmonary artery, leading to pulmonary hypertension. Autoimmune diseases such as systemic sclerosis can also lead to pulmonary hypertension because there is inflammation in systemic sclerosis which causes intimal fibrosis and medial hypertrophy. Sleep apnea and high altitude can also lead to pulmonary hypertension because there is continuous hypoxic vasoconstriction that occurs. And finally, left to right shunt can also lead to pulmonary hypertension because the left side of the heart will keep moving the blood to the right side causing a continuous increase in the pressure in the right side of the heart, leading to pulmonary hypertension. So again, to sum all of that up, COPD, mitral stenosis, recurrent thromboemboli, autoimmune disease, left to right shunt, sleep apnea, and living at high altitudes can all contribute to pulmonary hypertension. Describe the disease progression seen with pulmonary hypertension. Pulmonary hypertension will start off as respiratory distress. It will eventually become severe respiratory distress then leading to cyanosis and right ventricular hypertrophy, and this eventually leads to death from decompensated coropulmonal or right-sided heart failure. For more information on this topic, click on the link in the description section below. For a full USMLE Step 1 review, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com where we help you review the entire first aid for the USMLE Step 1 with high quality videos and hundreds of detailed pictures for a better understanding of the material. So to learn from the best USMLE review book, be sure to check us out at usmlefasttrack.com.